Hello, my name is Matt and I'm a dungeon master and an illustrator. But there's no Dungeons and Dragons this week as people are away on holiday. So what I'm going to do is um, draw a picture and talk about freelancing for a bit because I know there's lots of people that want to get into that side of illustration and I did it for 10 years and was quite successful by the end. By successful I mean I was making enough to earn a good living as well as save money and work was regularly coming in without me having to uh, constantly track it down. Um, and yeah, one of my clients actually recommended me for the concept art job. So um, it all came together in the end. Um, so yeah, before I get into that, I'll tell you about the guy I'm about to draw. His name is Black Mood and he's a uh, mercenary leader who's slowly turning his band of mercenaries into a warrior cult that starts to follow his twisted visions. Um, and he's going to be in a new adventure I'm working on on the side. Uh, so yeah, that's the guy I'm drawing. Uh, kind of part fanatic, part warrior. Um, so yeah, let's go over a few things I picked up in my 10 years I spent freelancing. Um, as I said, I went through every phase you can imagine. There was a very big slump phase in the middle there where I went broke and had to work in a factory making cardboard tubes for six months um, while I carried on trying to find clients and develop my portfolio. Um, and thankfully, while working in that cardboard tube factory, a guy who was making his own um, board game, a big project that he was fully funding himself, contacted me and had me do over 200 playing cards for him. And that was the thing that really kicked me off because I got to do a lot of art for good money. And um, so my portfolio really boosted. And from then on, it was basically um, pricing out clients and raising my prices as more and more clients came to me. Um, but that took about five years. So I thought, hey, I'll tell you what I've been through, little tips and tricks I've learned away, and you guys might pick up something that make your life a bit easier so you don't have to go through that slump. So the, the first thing I want to check is, do you really want to freelance? There's a lot of um, pros to freelancing, but there's definitely a lot of cons. Um, you, If you go full-time freelancing, you're basically earning money to live. Um, so you draw for your clients, you get the money in, it goes. You have to find the next client. Um, and you're drawing what other people want you to draw, not what you want to draw. Um, and yeah, holidays are very hard to relax and you're always thinking I need to find my next client soon or this money is just drying up that I've put aside. Um, yeah, so be very sure that you want to become a full-time freelancer. I totally recommend being a part-time freelancer to start off with. Um, have it as a second job, a second income that you do at nights. Um, just to start off with, you get to a point where people are paying you. Um, doesn't have to be much as long as you're getting paid to practice and develop your portfolio. That's fantastic. And if you're not full-time freelancing and just doing it on the side, there's no pressure. Um, this money is just extra and you uh, yeah, get a second income. You also get a chance to say, hey, I just want to work on my own stuff for a while um, and I won't do clients or if clients come in, I'll do them, but I won't go searching for clients. I'll just work on my own little projects, um, you know, create pieces that you want in your portfolio. Pressure's totally off. Um, so yeah, my first, my first tip for you will be don't quit your day job just yet. Let's get that freelancing going on the side first. I jumped in a few times and then came crawling back to work because I ran out of money before I made that 10 year stretch. Um, yeah. So the first thing you want to do is get on that first rung of the ladder where people are actually paying you to practice. Um, this applies to people who are trying to build up their skills to get to a uh, get to a freelancing level. Um, 
a full-time freelancing level. There's lots of people out there. I see them um, on the forums who are um, price point of themselves around thirty to fifty dollars for a commission. I think that's fantastic. You're um, building up your clientele. You're getting paid to practice, paid to build up your portfolio, and um, some of you are really good. Some are probably under pricing yourself. But that brings me on to my next point, which is um, my pricing model. And that was always supply and demand. So if supply became too, uh, demand became too high, I just raised my prices quite a bit to see if they stuck. Um, when I first started out, I was charging $40 a playing card. Um, I don't think I was quite <clears throat> Sorry, I don't think I was quite at a professional level by that stage. When I first started out too, I actually started out 100% as a 3D freelancing artist. Um, I came from a games background and then slowly transitioned into 100% 2D illustration, art, um, illustration artist. So yeah, when I first started charging for my illustrations, $40 a card. Um, Obviously, you can't live off that, but you do learn to be super fast. Another great skill for freelancing um, because, yeah, sometimes I could whiff out, you know, two cards a day if I wanted to eat a little better that day. Um, yeah, so pricing model, supply and demand. Figure out where your sweet spot is, and as your demand increases because your skills are increasing, raise that, um, raise that price. Um, and also if you get jobs that you really don't want to do, give them a crazy price, see if it sticks. Is that, it's a swear word off money is what the freelancers call it, where you're like, get out of here. Don't want to do it. Um, but Hey, if you're going to make me do it, here's a crazy price. Um, yeah. And then you might. Say you're doing this on the side and building up your portfolio and that demand is getting to a point where you say, hey, I could actually live off this consistently. Then it's a very good time to think about jumping into your freelance career. Whereas I jumped in, still scrambling to find clients, still trying to build up my um, skill set and yeah, fell apart horribly and uh, was very lucky to not be a homeless person living on the streets. Okay, what's my next point? Ah, finding clients. Um, this is what you need to do at the start. What you really want to find is project makers that constantly make projects uh, and you want to work well with them, um, produce amazing work for them. So whenever they have a new project come up, they think, hey, we're going to contact you. Um, so yeah, where do you find these people? The little secrets I've found is finding, um, hang on, I'm going to cut there and do a re-edit. So where do you find these project people? A great place is Kickstarter. Go through all the Kickstarters that are looking to be like they're going to be successful and fully funded. That means they're going to have an art budget and they're going to be looking for artists. So just contact them and say, hey, I'm an artist and um, I'd love to work on your project. And the beauty of that is these um, entrepreneurs are often not just one shot um, project makers, but we back with more projects. So and they're usually long term projects, which is a another hint. I want to get across is you want to get those long-term projects um, and just have short-term projects that you do at the top. So your long-term project is like your full-time freelance job and then your short-term projects are like your I'm still a freelancer on the side job that you do at nights. Um, that's the only way I started to make and save money. Otherwise all the money was going towards living and uh, the dead times in between. Um, so yeah, Kickstarter is a great place. Another good place I found was just going through um, aspiring writers who are self-publishing. Um, they often have terrible book covers. Um, so just offer to do them a better book cover. Um, 
you'll tell straight away when you you find them and uh, see the book covers they're putting out. Um, yeah, and if they're prolific, book covers uh, keep coming. I actually approached a writing agent who in the end set up his own digital format for all his uh, writers that he was promoting. And I ended up doing hundreds of book covers because there was writers that were old paperback writers that needed all their stuff brought into the digital format and they didn't have original copies of their uh, book covers and stuff. So did heaps of book covers for that. Uh, that was a good one. What else have I got here? Uh, yeah, I'm probably getting a few people watching this that are parts of Dungeons and Dragons groups because that's really blowing up and people want their characters drawn. Dungeon Masters want their entire parties drawn. Um, get in and join those Dungeons and Dragons groups and just put down your commission sheet. And again, go by the supply and demand. Um, if you're not getting any bites, you might have to lower your price. There's a lot of competition now in there and a lot of talented people. But the beauty is there's a wide budget range from... Um, and people have low budgets or are willing to pay people who are still figuring out the storing stuff and building up their skills. Um, yeah, so get into those Dungeons and Dragons groups, which probably a lot of you have already figured out because I'll be posting this video and one of them. Um, I'm just seeing if I've got any other quick hints. No, that was the three I put in. Kickstarter, I think, is a great one because they're going to have a great budget as well. And they're going to be looking for artists as soon as their uh, Kickstarter is successful. Um, yeah. Now, the other big hint I want to give people is it's a dangerous world out there and it hasn't happened to me but it's happened to a few of my friends where people get stuck in a money trap um, and by that i mean the client either off gives them a lot of money up front which isn't so bad but there's a lot of obligation involved in that or a lot of money at the end of a project um, just to describe what happened to a friend of mine they um, got asked to do 20 pitches i think um, and the guy was going to pay them something like $10,000 at the end of it. But these 20 pitches just dragged on and on. There was so much back and forth. There was extra art asked for. There was um, redos that were ended up like each picture would take a couple of weeks to, to finish. And yeah, as I said, the worst wasn't that. It was that this client was just saying, well, you need to do this picture now as well. If you want the ten thousand, and I kept telling them, just walk away, just walk away. This is they're just going to ring you out. It's the carrot on the stick type thing, and he didn't. And I actually don't know if he ever got the money. Um, I seriously doubt it. So unless you trust the client and you know the client, or they're a respectable client, don't fall for the big money at the end. That's, that's a biggie. But almost as important as the big money at the front. Um, for me, it's really important that you can just say, I'm going to walk away from this job. This isn't what I want. And if they give you big money at the front, there's this big obligation. And you st you kind of have no idea what it's like to work with a client. They'll be, um, you might think, oh, they're expecting me to do this level of quality where they might say, no, we want it to be, this level of quality where you might have to spend so much time doing it that it's not worth the money up front they've given you um and yeah they will have heaps of redos and that where in the end you're like i just don't want to be doing this but you're you're stuck because they've given you a heap of money which you've probably started to eat into because you're a struggling starting out freelancer um so the way i always approach it is just to say hey thanks for the Thanks for the project. Let's uh, just do the first, say, it, say it's card art, for example, or any um, piece of multiple pieces of art. I'll just say, let me um, work with you on the first card. If you don't like what I do, we'll just call it quits. Um, you don't have to pay me anything. But if you like the card, you can pay me for that card, and then we'll go on to the next card, and that way we'll be, both be happy. And any on honest client is totally happy with that because... It's not even like you're asking for half up front, which to me 
I understand why people do it, but it just gets a bit tricky if you want to pull out of that relationship. And yeah, I'm always been totally prepared to walk away from a piece of art if I sense that the client is uh, trying to pull a fast one on me and uh, happily walk away. And, and fortunately, it's never happened to me. Clients are fantastic. Um, so yeah, try to get paid by the card and and that way you can figure out what your clients like, what their expectations are compared to how much time and money you can spend on each card. And if it's not working, you just say, um, sorry, I don't think I can meet your quality level in the time that I need to be able to make my own budget on this. Um, good luck. And I'm sure there's lots of other artists out there that can help you. And everyone's kind of happyish. Um, and yeah, I think being a struggling freelance artist, you don't want to wait for that big money at the end anyway. You want this regular income coming in. So charge by the card. And it really helps you also work on your individual speed, your individual milestone planning. And they also understand how long it takes you to do a card. Uh, another tip is don't burn your bridges. Um, there's clients you want to work, walk away from, but do it in a mutually happy sort of way where you're basically saying, um, uh, I just can't live off what you're offering me at this point. Um, yeah, but don't get angry or anything. Um, the reason I say this is that a lot of my work of repeat business was um, clients coming back that suddenly had a bigger budget or and they had worked with you and they enjoyed working with you but they understood that they needed more money to work with you and they'll come back if uh, your working relationship was good uh, money was just a problem so yeah and I mean I can point to a number of occasions that's happened to me um, I've got a very big client that's actually uh, approach me I can't say who they are at the moment but they're probably the biggest client and that's all come from staying with a illustration agency that often um, sent me pretty bad jobs um, but this one's fantastic and huge and I'm very glad I didn't just burn that bridge and say I don't want to work with them again um, and yeah my last tip is to constantly build that portfolio that's um, that's your key to having work flowing in when you're not looking for clients. Um, as far as I've found, uh, I still get approached even three years after stopping freelancing and being the concept art by people who have gone through my portfolio and messaged me to see if I can still do um, commission work. And that includes Magic the Gathering, who must be scouring art station and they contact did me out of the blue. I used to um, contact them once every year when my portfolio sort of improved um, and never got a reply or anything. Um, and so left it once I got the concept art job and then a couple of years of that and they came through to me saying they really liked my portfolio. Um, yeah, and that's happened with this big client as well who's viewed it and as I say, lots of other interesting projects that I could have done board games um, and yeah really cool Dungeons and Dragons type books that people are working on and things like that which I've had to say no to and that's all down to finally building up a really good portfolio so yeah see all this um, all these jobs that you're doing freelance jobs side jobs is not only something where you're trying to please the client but it's something you want to put put in your portfolio so don't be thinking oh this person's only paid me $30 I'll whip something out and that'll be that as long as they're kind of happy for the work I don't also think this could be a portfolio piece and this will improve my skills and it all pays off in the end so yeah that's all my tips while I drew this picture I hope it went out well you'll probably notice in this picture that I went down a path overblowed it with light and everything and then pulled back to a earlier stage of the drawing I did overlaid that earlier stage on the blown out part and made it a bit better in my 
opinion. Um, thanks for letting me chat while I splat with digital paint. And uh, if you are looking to jump into the freelancing world, I wish you all the luck in the world. It is a lot of fun. You can go for swims in the beaches in the mornings and stuff like that. Work at night. Okay. See you later. Bye.